Hello, citizens of internet. I am Professor Ajit Verkud from Mumbai, India. Today I am going to discuss one of the common causes of leucorrhea called Trichomonas vaginitis. Trichomonas vaginitis is a very contagious sexually transmitted disease, STD. Trichomonas has been called the neglected sexually transmitted disease. The organism Trichomonas vaginalis causes symptomatic genitourinary infection in females and males in the ratio of 11 is to 1. Although Trichomonas vaginalis can be identified in 70% of the male sexual partners of infected women, only three quarters of the males are symptomatic. It is one of the three common infectious causes of leucorrhea among reproductive aged women, along with bacterial vaginosis and candidal vulvovaginitis. It principally infects the squamous epithelium in the urogenital tract, vagina, urethra, and periurethral glands. It has been estimated that about 180 million women are affected annually worldwide with trichomonas infection. According to WHO, it is the most prevalent non-viral sexually transmitted infection, STI. It accounts for about 30 to 40% of all sexually transmitted infections. The peak rate of detection for trichomonas vaginalis occurs in women of ages 47 to 53 years, compared with 14 to 20 years for chlamydia trichomatis infection. Trichomonas is a pear-shaped tetraflagellate modal protozoan, having an average size of 15 microns, called trichomonas vaginalis. It was discovered by Alfred Dunn. Besides the four flagellae, it has a nucleus. Undulating membrane and axostyle is shown in this diagram. It has an incubation period of four days to four weeks. It reproduces every eight to 12 hours by binary fission. Humans are the only natural host. Trichomonal vaginalis is a fastidious organism. It can survive on a wet sponge for several hours and in urine for more than 24 hours. Trichomonas vaginalis likes to live in wet, warm environment like the vagina, urethra and bladder. This trichy, pesky parasite has a slightly peculiar mode of sexual transmission. Trichomonas vaginitis is possible in women who have sex with men, WSM, men who have sex with women, MSW, and women who have sex with women, WSW, but not in men who have sex with men, MSM. I will explain what I mean by that, but before that, let me talk about pin-pong infection. When a heterosexual couple has sexual intercourse, the female partner who has the infection can pass it to her unaffected male partner through exchange of bodily fluids. Now let's say the female partner alone gets treated. But the next time she has sexual relations with the male partner who is harboring the disease will now pass it back to her. This can happen repeatedly unless both the partners are treated simultaneously. This is referred to as ping-pong infection. Trichomoniasis is very common in lesbian women, that is, women who have sex with women. Woman in a lesbian relationship can acquire the infection from her female partner, for example, while tripping which is when you just rub your genitals against your partner, when both of you are naked. This knowledge has significance, I will allude to it during prevention of the disease. What about transmission in men? For some strange reason, men typically acquire the infection from women but do not usually transmit the infection to other men. In other words, man-to-man -man sexual transmission does not occur. Trichomoniasis is very rare in men who have sex with men. Probably the throat or rectum is not a good reservoir for the parasites. It has other mode of transmission too, such as, sharing of douche equipment, use of infected person's clothes, towels, and communal bathing, swimming etc. Vertical transmission from infected mother to her female child is also reported. Please note, trichomonal vaginalis is a fastidious organism, it can survive on a wet sponge for several hours and in urine for more than 24 hours. Predisposing factors for this infection are. Since it is a sexually transmitted infection, 
The most important high risk factor is individuals having new or multiple sexual partners or having transactional sex. Other predisposing factors are other sexually transmitted infections, unhygienic conditions, infected husband. Reduced vaginal acidity in immediate postmenstrual period favors this infection. Other conditions coexisting with trichomonads are bacterial vaginosis, vulvovaginal candidiasis, gonorrhea and carcinoma of cervix. Trichomoniasis facilitates transmission of human immunodeficiency virus. More about this in the next slide. Trichomoniasis appears to increase the risk of acquiring HIV in HIV-exposed women by twofold. In women having trichomonas infection, a small HIV viral load can cause HIV infection. Treatment of trichomonas infection has been shown to reduce HIV shedding, possibly decreasing the risk of HIV transmission to seronegative partners. Consequences of trichomoniasis in non-pregnant women are Untreated trichomonal vaginitis may progress to urethritis or cystitis. In addition, trichomonas vaginalis has been associated with a range of adverse reproductive health outcomes, including cervical neoplasia, post-hysterectomy cuff cellulitis or abscess, and pelvic inflammatory disease. Consequences of trichomoniasis in pregnant women are in the past, trichomoniasis was considered just a nuisance infection with few, if any serious consequences. Researchers have documented association with adverse obstetric outcomes like premature rupture of the membranes, preterm delivery, and delivery of a low birth weight infant. One study has found association with recurrent pregnancy loss, but I am not sure whether it is correct. Whether treatment in pregnancy affects these risks, positively or negatively, is unclear. Consequences of trichomoniasis in newborns are Infants born to infected mothers may contract infection during delivery. Signs and symptoms in neonates may include fever, respiratory problems, urinary tract infection, nasal discharge, and, in girls, vaginal discharge. Treatment of asymptomatic infants is not necessary, as spontaneous resolution will occur when estrogen levels wane to normal prepubescent levels. In women, trichomoniasis ranges from an acute, severe inflammatory disease to an asymptomatic carrier state. Common signs and symptoms of acute infection include a purulent, malodorous, thin discharge associated with burning, pruritus, dysuria, urinary frequency, lower abdominal pain, or dyspareunia. Having said this, it is important to point out that, most women infected with trichomonal vaginalis are either asymptomatic or have minimal symptoms. In women with proven infection, only 11 to 17% present with typical symptoms. Symptoms may be worse during menstruation. Postcoital bleeding can occur. In chronic infection, signs and symptoms are milder and may include pruritus and dyspareunia, with scanty vaginal secretion. Symptoms in male are dysuria, hematospermia, frequency of urination, and rarely urethral strictures. Trichomonas vaginalis in men has been associated with prostatitis, balanopostitis, epididymitis, infertility, and prostate cancer. Speculum examination reveals erythema of the vulva and vaginal mucosa. The classically described green-yellow, frothy, malodorous discharge occurs only in 10 to 30% of symptomatic women, see picture on your left. Cervix is red, congested and may show multiple round petechiae giving it a strawberry or flea-bitten appearance as shown in the picture on the right. This is seen in 2% of cases. Vaginal pH can be used for simple bedside diagnosis of trichomonal vaginalis. This infection is typically associated with elevated vaginal pH, greater than 4.5, that is alkaline pH. However, it is not diagnostic as alkaline pH can be found in other causes like bacterial vaginosis, BV. 
remember 10 to 20% cases of trichomoniasis have normal vaginal pH. Of course patients with bacterial vaginosis can never have normal pH. One of the commonly used methods for diagnosis is saline wet mount. It is prepared by taking a drop of the discharge from the posterior fornix using an air spatula and adding it over a drop of warm normal saline, taken on a slide. It is covered gently with a cover slip and examined under high power. It will show tetraflagellate protozole larger than a leukocyte, but half the size of a cornified vaginal epithelium. You can see the characteristic jerking, twisting motion. Remember, organisms remain modal only for 10 to 20 minutes after collection of the sample. The organism has a teardrop shape when warm and active, as the specimen cools, trichomonad become round and immodal and therefore difficult to distinguish from the abundant surrounding white blood cells. This contributes to the poor sensitivity of wet mount. Wet mount has a sensitivity of 55 to 60% and a specificity of almost 100%. It requires 10,000 organisms per milliliter to identify trichomonas vaginalis on wet mount. There are abundant WBCs. The ratio of squamous cells to WBCs is less than 1. Remember a negative wet prep does not rule out trichomoniasis. Before the availability of nucleic acid amplification tests, the diagnosis was established using the following tests. Pap smear. It must be done to screen for cervical dysplasia or cancer. In fixative slide method, fixatives used are ethanol plus mercuric chloride, it is stained using gim saws or Fontana stains. The others are phase contrast microscopy and culture. Most of these are now obsolete. Currently, in modern gynecology, trichomonas vaginitis infection should be diagnosed by nucleic acid amplification test called NOTS, in short. These tests detect RNA by transcription-mediated amplification and now have become the accepted gold standard for the diagnosis of trichomonas vaginalis. Some of the commercially available nucleic acid amplification tests, NOTS, are, Aptima T vaginalis SA, is the only FDA-approved NOT, BD Probe Tech T Vaginalis QX Amplified DNA SA, Expert TV Test, Awesome Trichomonas Rapid Test is Non-Amplification DNA Hybridization Antigen Test. Samples that can be used for diagnosis include, endocervical swab, vaginal swab, urine specimen. Knots have a sensitivity of 95 to 100%. Remember knots are not as yet FDA cleared for testing in men. One more point that is not stressed enough in diagnosis is, patient and her partner or partners, should be screened for other sexually transmitted infections like HIV, HPV, syphilis etc. The most important aspect of treatment is its prevention with correct and consistent use of male or female condoms during penovaginal and anal intercourse, and dental dams during oral intercourse or female to female sex. Spermicidal agents such as nanoxinol 9, reduce the transmission of trichomonas. Ideally, before starting a sexual relationship, both partners should get tested in a STD clinic, but this is easier said than done. Living in a monogamous sexual relationship is another important way to prevent any sexually transmitted infection. However, in the current TikTok and Tinder era, the norms of sexual relationships and gender identity seem to have changed drastically. Principles of treatment are Treating both the partners simultaneously is, perhaps, the most important aspect of treatment of trichomonas vaginitis, as opposed to other vaginal infections. Patients should be instructed to avoid intercourse until they and their partners have completed treatment and are asymptomatic which generally takes approximately one week. This prevents ping-pong infection. General treatment involves improving personal hygiene and wearing loose cotton underwear, and avoiding multiple sexual contacts as mentioned earlier. A question that should be addressed is, should asymptomatic women be treated? The emphatic answer is yes. Asymptomatic women who are found to have trichomoniasis should be offered therapy to reduce sexual transmission. 
Therapy should also be given to patients with atypical inflammatory pap smears and trichomonas vaginalis. Another important part of the treatment, often neglected by the care provider, at least in India, is proper patient counseling. When informing the diagnosis to the patient, focus on the positive aspects of sexual health and reduce the stigma that is associated with diagnosis of STI. Avoid judgmental language. Specific treatment of trichomonas vaginalis is as follows. Drug of choice is tablet metronidazole 500, or 400, milligrams, twice a day for 7 days, or 2 grams of the drug as a single dose orally, this is a low cost, high compliance alternative to oral 7 days treatment, or vaginal pessaries 1 at night for 7 to 10 days. Please note that, oral administration is much more effective than topical intravaginal administration. Also note that the 7-day oral treatment is effective for treatment of bacterial vaginosis too. To reduce the possibility of a disulfiram-like reaction, abstinence from alcohol use should continue for 24 hours after completion of metronidazole or 72 hours after completion of other drugs like tinidazole. How effective is metronidazole? It is very effective. Cure rate with metronidazole is 80 to 90%, however about one-fourth of the patients who respond have recurrence. For HIV-positive women with trichomonas vaginalis, metronidazole 500 mg twice per day for 7 days is recommended rather than single-dose therapy. Other drugs that can be used are tablet tinidazole 2 g single-dose taken with food, or 500 mg twice daily for 5 days. Other imidazole derivatives that can be used are, tablet secnitazole 2 grams, that is 4 tablets, single dose, or tablet ornitazole. Other nonspecific drugs used are clotrimazole, natamycin. The most common causes of treatment failure are, noncompliance and reinfection. Most recurrent trichomonas vaginalis infections are thought to result from reinfection due to exposure to an untreated partner. In some cases it may be due to reduced susceptibility to metronidazole. For patients with refractory trichomoniasis, increasing the dose and duration of metronidazole or switching to tinidazole are the primary options. In metronidazole and tinidazole-resistant cases, intravaginal paramomycin cream can be used for several days. Boric acid capsules as intravaginal suppositories have also been used with some success. Please note, paramomycin can cause ulcers and has poor efficacy. Treatment of trichomonas vaginitis during pregnancy is as follows. There is no evidence of teratogenicity in humans with the use of metronidazole. It is safe during any stage of pregnancy. A single dose 2 gram metronidazole treatment is acceptable. Alternatively a 5 to 7 course of 400 to 500 mg of metronidazole daily is also acceptable. However, the safety of tinidazole in pregnancy has not been very well evaluated. Follow-up by re-screening is very important because reinfection is a problem. Women treated for a documented trichomonal infection should ideally be retested within 3 months following treatment regardless of whether they believe their sex partners were treated. Retesting can be done as early as two weeks after completing treatment. The rationale for repeat testing is that reinfection rates of up to 17% have been reported in women treated for trichomoniasis. If you want to know more about this, or any other topic in obstetrics and gynecology, please refer to my textbooks Modern Obstetrics, Modern Gynecology and my flagship book Practical Obstetrics and Gynecology. For purchase inquiries, please message me on this WhatsApp number. They are also available on Amazon.in. I have also published, two small question-answer books which are particularly popular with undergraduate and postgraduate examination-going students. These are Clinical Cases in Obstetrics 1000 Plus Questions and Answers, and Clinical Cases in Gynecology 1000 Plus Questions and Answers. These are also available on Amazon.in. You can follow me on other social media platforms like Facebook or Meta, and Instagram. 
Also read my blog on blogspot.com. Their links are given here. If you enjoyed this video and found it useful, hit the like button below, share it with friends and colleagues and also subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. You can also help me grow by clicking on the thanks button below.